Welcome to SickCast, brought to you by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. I'm Minnie Kaur, and I am the editor of the Guru Granth Sahib Project. We are excited to announce the release of the first 10 ponias of Anand Sahib. Now, the composition of Anand Sahib is composed by Guru Amar Das Sahib, and it is in Rag Ramkali. So the team has translated Anand as bliss, joy, delight. But our happiness, our joys, depend on how we connect with the flavors, with the objects, with the events in our life, which are all fleeting which are all temporary. But this joy, this anand that the Guru speaks about and shares with us is different. It's not tied to our ears. It's not tied to what our eyes like to see. It's not tied to what our tongues like to savor. It transcends the five physical senses of the body because it's an experience. It is beyond intellect, beyond emotion. And in these 40 porties, if we can think about them as steps on a ladder, we get to know, maybe we get a glimpse into the nature of joy and how to attain it. Now let's start with a couple of lines of the first pori. Now you may find these lines quite familiar because as infants, We've heard them in the arms of our grandparents, parents, and family. These lines mark the conclusion of every congregational gathering. And therefore, this Bani holds a special place in every ceremony. It stirs deep and cherished memories within us. And the lines are, Anand peya meri mai, Sat guru mai paaya. Satkurta paya sehaj seti manvajya badaya. Now Guru Amar Das Sab invokes his metaphorical mother's voice, the mother's voice that nurtures, the mother's voice that soothes, the mother's voice that comforts. In that voice, the Guru exclaims, Bliss has arisen. O oh, my mother, I have found the eternal wisdom. I listen and listen deeply. So this particular bliss has arisen because Guru Amar Das Sahib has found the Satguru. Sat is eternal. Guru is wisdom. So the Guru has found the eternal wisdom. How did this occur? How did this happen? It happened through unwavering dedication and steadiness. This is the hedge which we talk about. It wasn't a result of rigorous austerities, specific deeds, or unique practices. It unfolded through steadfast commitment in steadiness, which is in the hedge, with the hedge. So how can we personally access this bliss. Here's what I have learned thus far from these 10 parties. This bliss, this anand manifests when the eternal wisdom, when the Satguru becomes part of our existence. And how does that happen? It is through nurturing, tranquility, sahaj within us. So it's very possible for this to happen. This bliss transcends academic accomplishments, career progress, project, success, it's even cherished moments with the loved ones or in anything that we do. And when this bliss occurs, the Guru says, there is celebration, but where? In the mind. Celestial beings and celestial musical ensembles arrive to sing. Sing what? Sing the Shabad of Hari. Hari, the one light. Hari, 
the all-pervasive, hurry, the fear eliminator, these beings, these celestial beings, sing Shabbat. And now I want to take you to the fourth body because there a line comes which actually stopped me in my tracks. It took my breath away and the line is Kehananak suno santo Shabbat taro piyaro Nanak states, listen, O saintly beings, place love in the Shabbat. We, we humans, are being addressed as saintly beings. Guru Amar Das Sahib implores us, embrace the Shabbat with love. Cherish the Shabbat. Embrace it. Love it. And that's how you will experience bliss. Can we do that? It's that simple. How can it be that simple? But the Guru is revealing that it is that simple. Love the Shabbat. Now, no one can tell anyone how to love. We all love in our own ways. So in whichever way you love, love the Shabbat. Now, there are word meanings for every word in this composition as they are on the website. Every Shabbat, every Bani that is released on this project has a word meaning. So in this composition, in this Bani, I want to explore the word Paya. Sat Guru Me Paya. I have found the eternal wisdom. Now, for Punjabi speakers, our first instinct may be, let's to translate it simply to put or place and even to wear something. But in Anansa, there is another meaning to Paya. The term has been translated as found, received, obtained, attained. But these are mere words. How does one translate that profoundness of that moment, that emotion, that connection, when one has obtained that being, Satguru Mepaya, I have found the eternal wisdom. Every word that we use would be inadequate because it's a journey of love. It's a journey of surrender. And these emotions are beyond anything that we could translate or anything that is possible because these are feelings. These are emotions which cannot be put onto paper. In folk literature, this word paya is commonly used to invoke or imply a sense of profound love. It's the surrender of the self to the being that we have found to be the one we love. In Anansa, that being is Satguru, the eternal wisdom. Now let's imagine what your anticipation or my anticipation, your feelings and your emotions would be when you're about to meet the one you love deeply. Now magnify this anticipation and excitement to the love for Ikunkar, the one whom you are waiting for, waiting for that divine connection to happen, which we know only happens through grace. And when grace happens, you, the being, surrender completely and effortlessly. It happens effortlessly because you have no option, because you are drenched in that eternal love. Doubts of your worthiness fade because the love of the One, the love of Ikhankar, embraces you and bliss, anand, occurs. The vastness and the magnificence of this love is the nature of Ikyunkar, of the One. And this love is continuous. It never fades and will always be there for you, even when we doubt our own worthiness. And this is that love that brings bliss. This is that love that brings Anand. Now, when you engage with this composition and come across the word Paya, 
I hope you will take a moment to reflect on what it means to receive Ikankar, the one, in this context, and obtain bliss. These are a few of my thoughts on some of the lines of this composition. I could go on for another 20 minutes or so, or even more, but I have an ask. To the seekers, I ask you, I encourage you actually, to invest in reading both the literal and the interpretive translations. To the scholars, I invite you to delve into the word meanings and to the footnotes. They are rich. The footnotes really will enrich you. And if you're just beginning to explore, I recommend reading the commentaries. And for the lovers, simply sing the Bani. That's all that you need to do. And fall in love with the Shabbat. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Read the translations and commentaries at gurugransab.io. You are listening to Sick Cast by Sick Research Institute, illuminating every path.